Hi, I'm Matt from Jaggers Brewing Co. Today's project is going to be Father's Day Stout. So for Father's Day Stout, um, I normally brew this on Father's Day. I normally have the kids help me uh, on brew day. Generally they do things like help me mash in, help me stir the mash, help me uh, throw in some hops and uh, things like that. Uh, they used to help me when I uh, bottled and did some bottling conditioning and, and things like that. They would help me sanitize the bottles. Uh, this version of Father's Day Stout, uh, he abandoned me pretty quickly. Uh, we did brew this before Father's Day, so that way hopefully I can get a video out for this beer and share it with you guys and uh, you know give you a toast for being awesome dads and home brewers and everything in between so um, with this recipe this is the same recipe that I use uh, year-round it's like my house uh, recipe for stouts here uh, generally I brew it a few times a, a year uh, I change it up uh, I just use different yeast for the most part, whatever I'm trying to uh, push for uh, flavor profiles uh, on, on the yeast side. So, um, normally I will brew this same recipe for like my birthday, and then I'll brew this one for uh, Father's Day. Generally with this this beer, I use a uh, Hornadol Kike for this particular uh, time of year for for this particular beer. I just like all those fruity uh, esters and that profile that uh, Hornadol does to this grain bill. Normally for like my birthday or any other time that I just want this stout on hand, I will normally use the uh, Lutra Quake. Um, granted, you know, the Lutra supposedly comes from the Hornadol strain that's been isolated. Uh, but I normally use those two yeast. I've, I've fermented this same grain bill, uh, I think like twice, maybe with USO5 when I was first like developing it and uh, just to kind of see where it would be and then, then use some pipe on it. And I, I really liked how the, those two yeast performed on, on this grain bill. So, so I've just kept it. Um, I might play with it and maybe use some like Irish shell yeast at some point in time on it, but I'm, I'm really happy with the way that this stout comes out. Um, another side note is, so if you watched the uh, collaboration video with Craft Brew Hero and I, this is the more or less the same recipe that we use for the eggnog stout. Granted, with that beer, we did some crazy stuff for secondary fermentation and some um, additions there. So the grain bill is the same. It's just we did some different stuff there. Um, if you watched my, my collaboration video with Venture Brewing, uh, we taste tested my birthday style, which is the same as this one against like the uh, eggnog stout. So here's the Father's Day stout video. Um, I'm also going to compare this stout to the other two. Uh, but before we do that, before we get into it, I did run into a little bit of issue with uh, this version of this year. Let me go ahead and pour it and maybe you'll see kind of what I'm talking about. So, looks like it's got a good bit of foam on it. I don't know how well the color will transition here for everybody. But if you see this beer, it's lighter than a stout, uh, or at least lighter than the other stouts that I normally brew here. 
This is uh, out of character for this grain bill. I didn't pull the grains myself. Um, I had called it in. It's, it's, it's brown. It's not uh, not jet black. Um, I've already taste tested this beer uh, a couple times. Um, well, it's a good tasting beer. It's just not the beer I meant to brew and, and present here. So I was going to take this opportunity, compare this beer to the other two stouts that I have on hand. But uh, so the recipe for all these beers will be in the description below here. But I suspect that, uh, let's see here, it's probably missing some of the roasted barley from, from this recipe. Um, I treated this same beer the same way that I did with the father or with the birthday stout and the eggnog stout. I uh, underpitched my quiet as I normally do um, with pretty much any time that I use quiet here. Uh, and I also uh, doubled up on the yeast nutrients because of I'm underpitching that. Um, again, we ran it at 95 degrees. Uh, the starting gravity for it was 1.071 and the finishing gravity was 1.010 for an ABV of 8%. So, um, like I said, as far as the color goes, it's kind of off. As far as the taste goes, it's kind of off. On the aroma, I get um, a lot of that like Hornadol fruit. Uh, on the nose, a little bit of like the sweet orange, maybe some more of the tropical stuff like a uh, mango. Um, so it's got it's got a little bit of a, a, a of that like tropical fruit uh, notes to it. Uh, has a very sweet aroma to it. There are like a slight smell of like uh, alcohol to it. It's not overwhelming. For the appearance we talked about it, it's 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 dark, it's just not jet black it's missing some of those stout characteristics of it could it could stand to be a couple shades darker so as far as the taste goes um we're definitely missing some of those stout characteristics like the roastiness the toastiness aspects um on the front end I get some of those uh, fruity esters and, and the profile there on the very front end of like those those tropical fruits and dare I almost say something sweet kind of like a like peach or apricot. It kind of has a thin mouthfeel to it. Uh, there is a little bit of an alcohol kick to it and so I think things like the the, the mouthfeel and the alcohol uh, hit there I think that that would kind of blend in a lot better if we had some more of those those roasty and those toasty uh, notes with this beer overall it's not a terrible beer I kind of like it um, it's not my favorite it's definitely not what I was shooting for but I'm not gonna dump it either it's not it's not terrible it's not got off or anything like that now maybe if I had probably several other beers that I just needed to move and get into a keg and get them in and rotate them out I might suspect that that I, it would at least cross my mind to uh, dump this one just because it wasn't what I was shooting for. Still picking up a little bit on that sweetness uh, 
overall. It's not, like I said, it's not bad. It's just not what I was shooting for. So I'm a little bummed about that. Um, the only thing that makes sense to me is that on this beer, I didn't pull my own grains. Um, maybe there was a slip up or miscommunication. We're all human um, as far as that goes. I can't think of anything else that would have happened to this beer that would have made the color drop out and kind of lose all that. I think it's just the uh, uh, lack of the molds being in the green bill. So uh, while that sucks, I mean, it is what it is. Um, like I said, it's not a dumper in my opinion. So let's compare that beer to my birthday stout, which is the same recipe. So there should be pretty much apples to apples, oranges to oranges uh, scenario. Now, the only difference being that this was brewed with Lutra instead of Hornadol. And right off the top, I feel like you can tell that this is a darker beer. It's got good head retention. Got a got a big head, anyways. Uh, nice big bubbles, kind of dissipating quickly. But I don't know how well that's gonna show up. But the Father's Day Stout is going to be browner, whereas this one's black. So on the nose, this one smells pretty clean, uh, which I think is a characteristic of the Lutra. Uh, you do smell a little bit of the maltiness, the sweetness there. But it's a different... It's a, it's a different aroma profile than, than on the Father's Day Stout, whereas that one was more like fruit sweetness forward. This is more on the malt side. And the thing that I liked about this beer before when I brewed it and, and had it and shared it is I feel like with the Lutra in this recipe, it really pushes the malt, it lets the malt kind of have the, the front and center. Whereas like with that Father's Day Stout, normally, um, you kind of got a lot of those esters from the yeast strain pushing the sweetness and the malt kind of takes a little bit of a backseat. It's still there, but it's a more complex beer. So on the body, nice, medium, medium heavy, starting to head that way. Uh, doesn't have that thinness to it. Um, and don't really have that, that little bit of the alcohol, like kick or twang that like the Father's Day style did this year. Um, so like I said, these two beers normally back to back, fairly similar, fairly close, just a different like expression from, from the yeast goes. Um, now, the birthday style has been one of my favorite uh, beers to have around here to share and stuff and really like help introduce people to, to you know, quake and, and show them what it can do. Um, you know, this is this is a really good beer in my opinion. It's nice, it's clean, it's dry. Um, it's just all around a very good beer. And last but not least, and last but not least is the uh, eggnog style here. Again, same base recipe for this beer. Just a lot of different things happen into it in the um, 
secondary fermentation, which I'm pretty proud of this thing. Overall, I think it came out wonderfully. Again, fairly jet black. Tan, off-white head. Uh, noticeably, this one was a little bit um, smaller with the amount of, of head it had when it was poured. Uh, some of that head, I think, is due to everything that went into it in secondary, uh, like those wood chips that had a little bit of bourbon in it. I'm sure that helped killed some of the head and head retention capabilities in it among the spices and, and stuff like that. This thing was a really complex beer um, when we had it in January, February, I think. I can't remember when we did that video. But anyways, this was a really complex beer then. Um, I think at this point, probably about two or three more months removed from when we shot that. So this thing's got a little bit more age on it. So as far as the aroma goes, Man, I pick up a little bit on like, I, I think like the, the those bourbon notes, the vanillins and and stuff like that on it. Uh, some of the sweetness from from the bourbon and the vanilla bean that we we put in there. I don't really have a a yeast smell profile to it. Again, we used Lutra on this one uh, for this fermentation. I'll have to go back and look, but I don't think that I underpitched this one. I think I just used a complete uh, uh, package for it. So this one compared to my birthday style, this one seems like it has a little bit lower of a body of a mouthfeel. This one is definitely medium, maybe ever so slightly starting to tread into that medium heavy, whereas I feel like the birthday style was probably a little bit more heavier, and whereas the Father's Day style is, it's thin. I mean, it's light, it's, it's kind of disappointing unfortunately, but I hate, I hate to keep beating it up because it's not terrible. Again, I'm just disappointed in the way that it turned out. But um, this one still stands up and it's a, it's a very good uh, beer. I really like this one, uh, the Eggnog Stout. I'm pretty proud of, of that one and that collaboration that we did together. Um, so the next time that uh, you guys can probably see Eggnog Stout will be once it gets right at the one year mark of, of when it was uh, brewed. Uh, we'll see how that one ages out throughout the whole year. Uh, so at this point though, um, I'm not drinking anymore. We'll just revisit that when it gets to be about a year. I've got a few more of these birthday stouts uh, hanging around here. I've been sharing them off and on. I've, I've had a few here and there. So uh, that's probably probably a pretty good uh, beer in and itself. Um, I just I like to kind of have a few stash, stashed away. Um, here's your guys' opportunity to let me know. Do you want me to keep a few of those around and then compare them with the eggnog stout towards the end of the year and see which one we feel like holds up better uh, in a taste test? That might be interesting. Uh, so take the opportunity now if you haven't subscribed subscribe leave a comment let me know if that's what you want to if you be interested in seeing if, if you really want to see that um, so in order of the way out of these three stouts like what would be my number one what would be my number two 
it is really a hard toss up for the eggnog style and the birthday style. Um, um, I feel like <laughs> it's a really, it's a really big toss up between which one is my number one, which one's my number two. I think it would depend on like, you know, partially the season, partially what do I have going on? Am I going to share a bottle or something like that? Um, the eggnog stout is really a favorite beer of mine, but that's not something that I want to drink every day. Now, I am one of those heathens that drink stout year round. So I kind of feel like the birthday stout edges that one out a little bit more um, than, than the eggnog stout. The eggnog stout's kind of more, I guess, of the special occasion. It's a really good beer. It's one that I want to share with people and it would probably be better to split a bottle between myself and someone else because one, there, there's not a whole lot of these things left around. And then two, um, it's so complex, it's, it's nice to kind of bounce some stuff off of some people and see what they say. Normally, the Father's Day style would probably run neck and neck with the, uh, the, the birthday style just because I normally would have preferred that one with all the the sweetness and and, and uh, fruit esters and stuff like that that you pick up on it. Um, I'm not a big citrus fan, so the esters that are pushed from that being like those tropical sweet uh, esters and the fruit profiles there are kind of something that, that I really enjoy, that I really like. Um, if you brew this recipe or, or any of these recipes here that I'm displaying today, shoot me a message. Let me know what you think of, of the grain bill. Let me know what you think of, you know, how, how these things present to yourself. I'm, I'm interested to find out every time that I've shared this recipe or these beers with someone, everybody really likes it. So I guess I'm releasing it out to uh, the world and my audience and, and see what you guys think. But all in all, uh, I'll probably try to rebrew the the Father's Day Stout uh, just to see if I can for sure put that that finger on uh, on an incident that would have caused that um, issue with it not being dark uh, like it should be on the stout. But uh, thanks for stopping in and checking in on us and hanging out with us. Listen to me ramble for a little bit. Uh, really appreciate uh, all the audience that we've gained and how awesome uh, you guys have been and, and support and, and all that. If you still haven't taken the opportunity to subscribe to the channel, please do so. Um, you know, I'm not making money off of this or anything like that, but it's, it's nice to kind of see those numbers grow, see what you guys are interested in, and uh, come along on my homebrewing adventure. Thank you so much again for coming by, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye. Cheers to all you awesome homebrewing dads that just get in there and take care of business. Hey guys, real quick. Um, so it's come to my attention while editing this video that we had a lot of surplus footage from a past Father's Day stout. It's actually the first one that I used uh, Qui-Gon with the kids uh, during brew day. And anyways, um, so we found all this footage and if this video can get 25 likes, uh, we'll, we'll edit that together and we'll release it uh, here on the channel. I think that will be kind of a cool benchmark uh, if you guys can do that. It's some pretty funny footage. Um, maybe I'll do some kind of commentary while I watch it and uh, edit it up, uh, kind of like a behind the scenes edit slash video with commentary or something like that. Um, so I'm gonna put that in your guys' hands. You guys already have another challenge uh, here in this video too on if you wanted me to do something or not but um there you are 25 likes and we'll get that other video uh 
done up and released. Thanks.